Hey everyone, Jordan from VSI. We're going to do a unique video today in which we show you what not to do when you're liquid de-icing. So we're not sure exactly what results are going to happen, but we can tell you we get asked a lot, when should I pre-treat, when should I not? One of the really common scenarios when we recommend you do not pre-treat with liquid is before a dry snow event with blowing snow. So tonight here in Minnesota, we're expecting one to three inches of snow, 20 to one moisture ratio, and high winds up to 40 miles an hour. What that means is that dry snow is going to be blowing across the asphalt and concrete parking lots. And if those lots are not treated, typically what happens is the snow just blows across, doesn't create ice, doesn't create hazardous conditions. Sometimes when you put down salt, or in our case, a liquid pre-treat, what will actually happen is that dry snow blows across, and that treatment will actually catch some of those particles of snow and ice and create a layer of ice in the parking lot. So what we're going to do here today is 45 gallons an acre. We're going to use the fan nozzles on our sprayers. Our Genesis 305 here has a 95.5 blend of salt brine and headwaters hot, which is what we do all of our pre-treating with. Our Legacy 305 back there has straight salt brine in it. We know a lot of our clients use that, so we wanted to show you both. We're going to do one pass with the 305 Genesis and the 95.5 blend. We're going to leave a strip untreated, and we're going to do the next strip over from that with the straight salt brine. We're not exactly sure what results we're going to see. It's going to depend on the weather. What we're hoping to show you is why we don't typically recommend pre-treating with dry blowing snow. All right, so we're back here checking out the results from our spraying yesterday. Um, they didn't quite get the snow out right. We only got about an inch. I guess we said one to three, so on the low end of what they said. The wind they nailed, it's been horribly windy for the last almost 24 hours. Um, but this is about 24 hours from when we sprayed yesterday. And exactly what we expected happened on this lot. So here's the 95.5. You can see a very definitive line exactly where you sprayed. The snow stuck to it. The untreated spot that I'm standing on here, almost nothing stuck to that. The straight salt brine, uh, not quite as definitive. Actually, we came and checked this morning and the straight salt brine hadn't totally started accumulating snow yet. The reason for that is because we're below zero right now and straight salt brine really doesn't work below zero. So that's why not as much stuck to that treated surface. But again, very definitive line here. Now I should mention, take the opportunity to mention, we get asked a lot about wind chill. Does wind chill affect liquid? The answer is no. Ambient temperature is all that matters. So if it's, right now I think it's about negative two, wind chill is negative 30. Um, you don't spray as if it's negative 30, you spray as if it's negative two. Now what wind chill does affect is the fact that the pavement will cool down faster. So if I were to take a temp gun on this pavement right now, it's probably at the ambient air temperature, but it's not gonna drop below that because that's not physically possible. So again, we get asked that a lot, so I thought I would mention it in this video. All right, so we actually came back inside for the outro of the video here just because it's so cold and windy, I couldn't even hear myself talking. Uh, but as we said, or as I said outside, exactly what we expected happened. Uh, the treated areas on the lot stuck. The untreated areas were bare pavement. Um, so in this case, pre-treating actually made the lot more dangerous and it's going to require more work on the back end to clean it up. So very few times we won't recommend pre-treating, but dry blowing snow is one of them, and this is a perfect example and showing you exactly why.